Sobre... Aí fica aqui, tinha essa palete, a gente está na maneira simples. É interessante, uma análise com o treino de limpar, mas quando eu digo isso, eu vejo, você vai ter tudo esse peixe na igreja. É um pai que tem que ser forte aqui, qual o seu bicho, qual a rapi, me cria ali. I am sure that the celebration of Golden Jubilee has still to be one of the memorable events in the history of Hasti, Jantia, and Jordi. This is a moment for the people that are still has achieved this milestone. The celebration is of great importance and joy. 50 years ago, the state of Meghalaya was inaugurated by the then Prime Minister of the country, Mrs. Ingratton. Garrison Ground in Shillong, 21st of January, 1972. So before we start the first grade program of this petition, Chairperson, Dr. Antarna, then we'll have welcome some by the degree students, and followed by welcome address by the number as well the person of the Then we'll have a skit by the and degree students, and then followed by a traditional dance by the welcome students. Then we'll have a song that we talk to students. Last but not least, by the uh, word of thanks by the uh, Sonica from the University. So let me invite the EU students to perform their roles. <laughs>
uh, small correction here. I will do a little more development because it will be directly a speech that I'm going to explore. So, yeah. um, thank you, students of our stream, for this wonderful song. Surely, this will be a memorable song this event. So, now with, with, uh, without any much delay, let us now go to the next program that is an address by Madam Principal, Dr. Sabita Sen. Okay. Okay, there is a slight correction here again. Yeah. Uh, now we will have first uh, the skip by the students, and then after that, we'll have the address by the numbers. So I'd like to call on the students of the common PA to perform the skip. A very good morning to our respected principal, Dr. Mrs. Edson, our vice principal, our dear beloved teachers, and yes, my greetings goes out to all of you as well who are streaming this event online. This day is an auspicious day indeed for all the people of Nepal. But today, the state turns 50, and we celebrate the golden jubilee of Nepal State. And in order to commemorate this blissful day, me and my friends have prepared a short skit showing just a brief look on what took place in those days. So now, without further ado, let us go on with the act. It was the mid 1950s. The Khasi, Jatya, and the Gano Kings were then a part of Assam. When the then Chief Minister of Assam, Sri P. Chandra, introduced the official language bill in 1960, declaring Assamese as the official state language. The hill areas saw a tumultuous future ahead. Subsequently, the APHLC was formed and this proved a catalyst for launching the hill state movement on a man's scale in the Khasi, Jantia, and Garo hills. The slogan, No Hill State, No Rest, became synonymous with the movement. So, gentlemen, what is this? Are we all speak Assamese now? No, no, I can't let this happen. Let us go for me immediately. It was in this meeting convened by Captain Williamson E. Sanna on the 16th and 17th June 1954 at Shillong that the idea of a hill state first took shape. The chief executive members of the three district councils and also the Lucha Hills, along with Reverend J.J.M. Calls Roy, felt that the idea of statehood for the hill areas of Assam was viable and the leaders decided to work towards making the stream a reality. But before to the participants of the Gilbert Lindor as Brinton Mukhail Lindor, Ida K. Nongri as Sam and Eva Gracia Pingro as Ms. I'm happy to have you all here. I hope so. You are aware of the circumstances as well as possibility. Yes. How can we let our people be restrained from speaking their own native language? This is unacceptable and a very biased decision ever made. We cannot let this happen despite the right of our people. 
We must not allow that to rise. Culture over us. We must fight to preserve our racial identity and language and culture. How can we speak of this language when we have our own language problem? I think it is better for us to fight for our own little state. And if the government does not comply with our request for a state, we are not going to rest. No hill state, no rest. Because that people know what wants to do. Can I just listen to whatever they say? As if they are to be the government. Must fight for our own, our own rights. And to save our own culture. Can I just There was a meeting before the movement started, held at Darbar Hall, Mohar in Shillong. Jawaharlal Nehru also came to attend the meeting. There were lots of classes there who came to listen to Nehru. It was in this meeting where McDonald Krakumar spoke with Nehru, but eventually all hell broke loose. He stood up shouting and arguing with Nehru. Nehru took the rose from his buttonhole, threw it, and stomped out. Hunger strikes, black flag demonstration, raising of banners, and distribution of pamphlets, which said, No hill state, no rest, and separate state or direct action took form. That bodies like the Castle of the National Darbar, the Federation of Castle States, and the Garo National Council was instrumental in molding the minds and thought process of the people of the hills towards fighting for a separate state. Although the seeds for a separate state was planted as early as 1920s, it became more pronounced from 1947 to the 1960s. The Hill State Movement took its course and it was on 24 December 1969 that a bill was passed in both houses of the parliament, becoming the Assam Reorganization Meghalaya Act of 1969. On 29 December 1969, the bill received the assent of the president. So, after much struggle and endless months of disappointments, the fateful day arrived where Prime Minister Indira Gandhi came to Shillong and on 24 January 1972, Uganda was inaugurated as a full fledged state to much joy and celebration. On that day, ministers are sworn in by Governor. You should be after me. I, I stand the meeting of the court. You solemnly affirm that. You solemnly affirm that I will not directly or indirectly communicate or reveal to any person or persons any matter which shall be brought under my consideration or shall become known to me as a minister for the state of Mikhaya. Except of my duties as a minister. Williamson A. Sangma, the Chief Minister of Mikhalia, gives the inaugural address. As we are on the one set of celebrating the grand official function of Mikhalia statehood. On this day, the 21st January 1972, I wish to place in record my humble gratitude to the members of the parliament, the political leaders, all the top personality men and women, the Kasi, the judges, and the Garo community who led from the front with head and heart, body and soul, through hard work and sacrifice, giving their time, money, and energy in the fight for statehood. I am convinced that even goodwill and even the spirit of cooperation at all times we can share. The enjoyment with the rest of the country. Madam, once again, I thank you. I wish you good health on behalf of people of Italia. Jay Hill. At 
And now we have a speech by our Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. A very good morning to all of you. This is a new constitutional experiment and we sincerely desire its success. And I am glad to hear you say that this good work, a spirit of cooperation will continue on all sides and set an example of cooperative and able for the rest of the country. These efforts could bear the fruit because of the spirit in which you, your colleague, and your people will follow to death. And now, I declare Mikhalaya a full-fledged state. Thank you. With this, we have come to the end of our skit. But before ending our act, we would like to perform a song. Oh, they're 
Actually, that song was composed by Bob <coughs> E. Brimley uh, during the period of uh, So, it uh, was indeed a really nice uh, song. And um, thank you, uh, Become uh, uh, and BK students, for this wonderful song. Such an awesome skit at the same time. And uh, we should remember that one of the exceptional characters of Houston was that was clearly a non-violent character. Not even a single drop of blood was shed by the forefathers of the state during the movement. Hence, this is one of the features of the movement that people would see gently and gather the ship because it was a unique, uh, unique procession during the time, unique agitation. Uh, it, it sounds like it sounds simple that we get a state of reality. Uh, you will know there was a long process during the period that the people had to do so many meetings, applications, demonstrations, and then now we achieve this state of the government. 
which is such a wonderful and beautiful thing. We both diagnostic how this from year to year. So with this, let us go to the next chapter. That is the traditional dance by the conferencing systems. You know, it's always nice to see the traditional dance uh, to watch, and uh, this dance particularly portrays the three tribes or the, or the three communities of the Kasi Jain family. So, thank you, the Crown First and Sisters, for this wonderful traditional dance. Now, let us go to the next program that is the album address, no, sorry, that is the address by uh, Madam Presbyter, Dr. Sarkasi. A very good morning to all of you here. It is indeed a very great day for us, celebrating the 50th years of our statehood. A beautiful hill state, a small but beautiful hill state, a peaceful state with you know, heaven's blessings on us, especially when it comes to natural 
beauty, the landscape, the hills, the clouds, the very name of our state, Meghalaya, which means a boat of clouds. Nowhere in India you may see so many different kinds of clouds. At any moment of the day, you will see different kinds of clouds. And so also, you will see different kinds of people in the state. Basically, we are a very peaceful you know, nature people. Our forefathers, our ancestors were very peaceful and they liked peace. And that's why probably what uh, Dr. Lasso Borke said that this statehood was achieved um, in a bloodless way. Not a single drop of blood was shed. Yes, they had to fight, they had to sacrifice. You know, our forefathers did a lot. You know, our ancestors did a lot. Our leaders did a lot. They are not here today to see this day. But because of them, we are seeing this day. And we are proud to be born in this state. Let me tell you, I personally, I've been so blessed to be born in this state, in this particular state and this particular place, probably. Uh, respected chairperson, Dr. Lasporki. Uh, Vice Principal, Dr. Sonija Kogwir, uh, Cultural Committee Convener, Ms. Uh, Ayana Kramofla, the faculty members uh, of the History Department uh, who is organizing this program, Mr. Uh, Mantre, our, our technical head, uh, members of the non-teaching staff and my dear lovely students. I'm so happy to be here today. In fact, I've been so fortunate, so blessed that, you know, I could speak on this day. Never did I realize when I was in class four that I would be speaking for a Golden Jubilee celebration, an incident that I personally had witnessed. I was just in class four, I remember. You know, we had, my father was a congressman and ever since, you know, independence, pre-independence and post-independence. So, you know, they were really into it, fully, fully busy with, you know, the, the full state movement. My father would come back you know, quite late at home and we would wonder what is happening. And he had his business, he said, oh, go to, go to hell with business. <laughs> Let us get freedom for our state. And often he would be going out for meetings. And there were times, you know, that time I wouldn't understand what these meetings were class for, you know, farming meetings meant, you know, tea and snacks that were offered probably at, the, at those meetings. But, uh, and I still remember when, when, when she mentioned Mrs. Gandhi coming in garrison ground, those were the days when we were young and almost all the state functions were held in garrison ground. And, and there, there is that pavilion there where Mrs. Gandhi was wearing a beautiful golden dhara, you know, a, Yellow Dhara. I still remember it was a yellow Dhara and she was wearing the gold and yellow paila. And when she declared, we as small kids, we didn't know what was happening. We were jumping and shouting and with, with others. Today I realize, or maybe when, when I grew up, I understand what it meant to get one's own state, to get a space of our own where we can flourish on our own. I'm really honored and uh, and humbled to be a part of this program, of this Golden Jubilee program, which is being organized in our college. We're celebrating the 50th year of statehood of Meghalaya, and we wish to place on record our salutations and gratitude to all the great personalities, men and women, from the Khasi Jaitya and Gara community, who led from the front with head and heart, body and soul, through hard work and sacrifice, giving their time, money, and energy in the fight for statehood, to be in one's own space, to be able to speak one's language, to be able to, to think in one's own language, especially intellectually. We'd also like to express our sincere obligations to those non-tribals who were empathetic towards the cause of the tribals here in Meghalaya and perhaps contributed materially and physically in whatsoever way towards attainment of the goals. Our greatest gratitude goes to those unsung heroes of 
42,600 volunteers from among the Khazis, Jainas, and the Garis during the height of the Hill State Movement. These men and women and youth were from the towns of Shillong and Tura, mostly from the suburban and rural areas. Later on, the Hill State Movement volunteers were lesser in numbers, though peaceful. Although when it took the form of the full-fledged Hill State demonstration through hunger strikes, black stage, uh, um, flagging the, um, hoisting the black flag as a protest, distribution of pamphlets which said, we want full-fledged Hill State, down, down with autonomous state, echoed from the public gallery in old Assa Legislative Assembly. However, the movement for a full-fledged state was by no means less forceful. Less people, but it didn't mean it was weak, it was very strong because there was, there was a way of fighting for, for our own statehood. My gratitude goes to the volunteers of full-fledged Hill State movement who spent more sleepless nights, and that's why we're sleeping peacefully, endured more hunger, that's why we are eating well today, and fasting and suffering, body pain, from the lotties of assemblies. I don't know how bloodless it was. People who suffered the lotties, they know how painful it is. You know, suffering body pain from the lotties of assemblies, and most of all, who underwent imprisonment for longer days, and even for six months, both in Shillong and Guwahati jails. You know, staying in a jail, jail is no, no mean job, especially in Guwahati, if in, in that hot place, it must have been so difficult for those freedom fighters uh, who fought for us in the state. Uh, I, my heart really bleeds when I think how much they suffered for us. Now let us look into some of the historical facts. Before becoming an autonomous state, the Kaya was ruled by the Khazi, Garo, and Jaita tribes, having their own individual kingdoms. In the 19th century, the British administration took over. They incorporated Meghalaya into Assam in 1835. The region enjoyed semi independent status by virtue of a treaty relationship with the British Crown. When Bengal was partitioned in this, on the 16th of October, 1905 by Lord Curzon. Meghalaya became the, you know, I'm saying Meghalaya now, but that time, you know, this place didn't really have a name. We just, it was it was known as, as Rushai Hills or Khasi Hills or Jaita Hills in that manner. Meghalaya became a part of the new province of Eastern Bengal and Assam. However, but the partition was reversed. In 1912, Meghalaya became a part of the province of Assam. On 3rd January 1921, in pursuance of Section 52A of the Government of India Act 1990, the Governor General in Council declared the area now in Meghalaya, other than the Khasi states, in course, backward tracks. It hurts me to hear all this. When people say people in the Northeast are backward, it hurts me. It hurts us, I'm sure. Subsequently, however, the Government of India Act 1935 regrouped the backward tracks into two entities, namely, it, uh, within quotes again, excluded and partially excluded areas in place of the backward tracks. Now, see how things are changing. And this is because of the pressure that, is, that was given by our people, by our tribal people. They had to change their, their nomenclatures. At the time of independence of the country, the present day Meghalaya constituted two districts of Assam and enjoyed limited autonomy within the state of Assam. The Assam reorganization of Meghalaya Act 1969 accorded an autonomous status to the state of Meghalaya. The act came into effect on 2nd of April 1970, and an autonomous state of Meghalaya was created within the state of Assam. The autonomous state had a legislature. In accordance with the sixth schedule of the constitution, the legislature had 37 members. In 1971, the parliament passed the Northeastern Areas Reorganization Act. 
which conferred full statehood on the autonomous state of Meghalaya. The creation of Meghalaya is best expressed by Swarna Raja Mumala in her report on peace accords in Northeast India. The formation of Meghalaya began as a demand for stable hill state in Northeast, but was replaced by demands from several groups for their own states and the All Party Hills Leaders Conference focused its attention on the Khasi Jaitin governments, which already had autonomous councils provided by the sixth schedule. A proposal to demand by the residents, a, a proposal to create a hill areas committee in the South State Assembly quickly yielded to the demand by the residents of Khasi Jaitin and governments for statehood for Meghalaya with the Assam's language was adopted statewide and a medium of instruction. So you cannot impose, I'm always on the books, you cannot impose your language on others. Let people flourish with their own language because each and every language in India, especially the dialects, the, the, the culture, the cultural, uh, the culture and ethnicity, the richness of a language should not be stifled. And that is that was the reason when you cannot speak your own language, nothing can hurt us more. And that really gave a fervor to the movement of the state. Within the first decade of independence, the ethnic and linguistic assertions sought the reorganization of states and the representatives of all the little tribes of the San Metatura in 1954 to prepare a memorandum of the state's reorganization commission demanding a hill state as the autonomy granted by the sixth schedule was not real and substantial. It was only a theory. It was not, you know, central government. I should not be quoting probably. You know, there is always an anomaly between written what is written and what is not written. The structure of the proposed hill state included a legislative assembly, a council of ministers and a governor who would also be responsible for the administration of which ultimately should be a part of the hill state. But the hill state and the residual state of Assam should have a common high court, in quotes, in quotation, common high court, so that we may still be under them. Public Service Commission, Accounting General, and the interim, Shillong as a common fact. The counter proposal from Assam was a state for the entire state of Malays, including Darjeeling, Jalmaiburi, Kujbihar, and Myanmar, which is Arunachal Bar. It must be mentioned that in the early 50s, most of the legislators of the new districts were pressing for greater autonomy for the councils and the sixth schedule, elected chairmen for all the district councils, representations from the councils in the cabinet, limitations on the veto powers of the governor, and last but not the least, the control of Shillong municipality by the Khasi's council. The wish to control Shillong was also at the root of the contest between the state of Assam and the protagonists of the Khasi assertion, especially when some parts of Shillong were named after pigs. Again, we don't want our things to be named after foreigners. Since it belongs to us, I cannot be having a foreign name since I'm not a foreigner. This, this was the main, main idea behind reacting to the names of uh, reacting to the names given to the roads and places uh, of place people by the by the hills people in 1962 the APHLC had become a political party contesting elections and had an outstanding success in all the autonomous districts except Mekir and North Kachar districts however discussions with PM Nehru weren't inconclusive and his successor, Lakhman Shahsi, appointed the Ataskar Commission, whose recommendations are stopped short of a separate state and were hence rejected by APHLC. By 1967, the center proposed a reorganization of Assam based on a federal structure to eliminate one for the hills and the other for the plates, with equal status but common institutions like the High Court and the Public Service Commission, etc. However, this does not work because of the, uh, uh, the force, and we, we can we can uh, we can also say it because of the the cunningness of 
the Assam Congress leadership, Deepi Chalia and Fakhru Jehaliya, who convinced the CWC leadership, including Marai Jadisai, against this dismemberment of the Assam. However, a Congress-style compromise was undertaken. Everything except law and order, state highways, irrigation, power, and control of the Shilong municipality and control and cantonment area was transferred to the hill substrate of Assam. The Assam legislature would have no veto power over the transfer of the subject. The idea of a Northeast Council under the chairmanship of the governor of Assam was also mooted at this time. And all the chief ministers of the Northeastern states, Assam, Nagaland, and the new autonomous states, would be members along with the chief commissioner and chief ministers of the Union Territories of Manipur and Tripura. But this was rejected. The people of the Northeast rejected. Union territory to be uh, these states, for example, uh, Manipur, Tripura, and Meghalaya to be under the Union territories. And, and therefore, the Hill State movement took a very forceful stand and it became more heated and, uh, say, probably more fruitful. And finally, we, we got a state, uh, we got a statehood. Now, when, when Mrs. Gandhi became the, the Prime Minister of India, she, she Usually, when prime minister, when we have new prime ministers in the state, you know, uh, in the country, they go and visit all the states. And when they and when she came to Meghalaya, to Shillong, Shillong, a beautiful place known for its uh, nature, known for its weather, known for Cherrapunji at that time. Even now, it's even now, you know, when you go out of Shillong, when you say you are in Shillong, people don't know where Shillong is. When you say you are from Cherrapunji, and they know. When she came here, some of our tribal leaders met her and you know, spoke it out with her. And that was the time she, she, she decided probably, and she made, she, she made a decision that statehood would be given. And finally, she had to, uh, though there were pressures from all sides in the parliament, she had to succumb to the, um, to the demands of statehood, and statehood was finally given to us. And here we are today celebrating 50 years, 50 years of our statehood. Those people who fought are not there, but you know, they are in our hearts. We will always remember them as and when we think of our state, when, when we think of our state as a beautiful state, a free state where you can speak your own language. Now, today, since I'm talking about language, in this 50th year of our golden jubilee, I would request intellectuals, I would request the, the, the people in the system of affairs to develop the language. No people can survive without its language. Let things be written down. You know, I, I, I tried to find out many things about my state and I couldn't find much. There were not much things. So it's time that, you know, we, we, we write down whoever says anything. To the students today, please ask your parents, please ask your grandparents who were there, you know, like so that you know, through through oral tradition, it can be it can be recorded, and the new future generation can know about our state and our people, our culture, because it's a Khasi, uh, Khasi language, Janta language, even Garu language for that matter, it is it is still in its in its in its in its nascent state, it is still in its oral state, we can say. To work to the virtual world. So if we don't speak this language, if we do not develop this language, how can we expect it you know, to be taken out of the day's schedule? How can it be accepted as one of the, the official languages? So I on this 50th years of statehood, this is what I want you know, that the language, more people should write this language and speak this language and develop it, not just you know, let it be, let it be from where we have started. And uh, I must thank my teachers here today, history department, also as department, I can see classic department, I can see commerce department, I can see English department here. You know, the teachers, you know, you have done a wonderful job at a very short span of time, probably. And I'm really grateful to you all for making this program a grand success. The, the students who, who played the who enacted the skit? It was beautiful. You, know, you almost captured the, the last final moments of when statehood, the, the excitement of getting the statehood. Uh, 
I think they deserve an applause. Can you give a big applause for them? People sitting at home watching, watching this program, please clap. Even if people think that you're mad, yes, we are mad today. We are mad today because we are happy. We are celebrating 50 years of our of our state. And with these few words, I thank all of you for coming and sharing this glorious day today. Thank you so much. Long live Meghalaya. May our state flourish, may it go higher and higher. May we develop in all sphere of life. Thank you so much. God bless our state. God bless all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your insightful and knowledgeable address. Uh, you have rightly pointed out that uh, you know, uh, all those who were involved during the crucible time, they deserve, you know, a big, big, uh, you know, round of applause for us and from us and from all of us. Because of them, we have achieved this wonderful state of Nagara. And you have also pointed out that. I think you know that uh, all the people, those who were involved during the creation of Mekalia, they uh, you know, deserve to be remembered today. And uh, we should thank all those volunteers who were involved during the movement. And also, I don't know, maybe because I'm a student of history, so it's always you know, a joy and happiness for me when someone shared their experience during the period, especially during the host of time, now you have already told us that uh, you were in class four during that time. So you have seen the, you know, the situation with joy and atmosphere during the period. So it's very nice to hear from you, ma'am. Always it's a pleasure. Thank you so much, ma'am, once again. So now let us go to the next program. That is uh, the song by the Confucius. Tungin yan ng 
we were late in time to be going to some student for this unique, unique song. Well, that was a song composed by it by Neil Green. Neil's song Live Forever. And now, last but not least, we'll go to the next book under the school well, I stand here to deliver a lot of thanks. First of all, I'm very thankful to God for keeping us in good health. Hence, we're all here today. I would like to thank the Department of History in collaboration with the Cultural Committee for organizing this program. And I can tell you, Ms. Ayuna and Sir Lasso worked very, very hard to make this iconic day you know, in the history of our state a big success. Thank you, Sir Lasso and Ms. Ayuna. I express my gratitude to our principal, Dr. Savita Sen, for the well-prepared speech. And it was very, very informative on the history of Meghalaya. We have learned a lot from what you, you know, spoke to them. Thank you students of the Kasi department for the beautiful welcome song. And the BCom third semester students today, you have shown your other talents. With so little time to practice, you have done a wonderful job. Thank you BCom first year students for that lively and exhilarating dance. It made me want to jig. Be confident, semester students. Thank you so much for your wonderful song. I place on record my gratitude to our reporters, Ms. Darwin Lance Ain and Ms. Angela Singhania for doing a wonderful job. I would like to say a special thank you to Sir Bankar Karunlong, Karunlil, sorry, for always being a source of support to us. Thank you, Bahil, for this beautiful flex which I believe is extremely beautiful and meaningful as well. And last but not the least, I would like to say a big thank you to Sir Mantre and Sir Andres for the online stream. Thank you. Happy Meghalaya Day. Let us all stay safe and stay healthy. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for this wonderful thanks. And uh, we would like also to give a special thanks to you because you have been a constant support and guidance to all of us during the preparation of this kid. Ma'am was there, she was helping us. Otherwise, uh, we, we would be this kid would not have been possible. Thank you so much, ma'am. So now the program is content, ma'am. And uh, uh, we should. End this program by all of the possible participants. Thank you. Oh, I'm <laughs> going 